first became involved probably in about 1979, 1980. I watched Quadrophenia, I was into two-tone and all that kind of stuff. And I got my first scooter probably early 1980, which was an LI 150, which then progressed on to GP200 and also a GP150, which I bought brand new. So, um, yeah, progressed from there and formed a scooter club in. We had a scooter club in Bridgewater in, in the early 80s and um, it was more of a mod club then in, in 80, 81. And we, we were people that went up north a lot on scooter rides, so we formed our own scooter club called Scooter Maniacs in 82. And I progressed on from there, really. No, I wouldn't say I was a mod at all because I was more into the more into the two-tone stuff. So we kind of like, the group of us, we were more into kind of like two-tone, the skinhead stuff and things like that. But we also liked some of the mod stuff as well and Northern Soul. So we were kind of like a, a, a mixture of different types of people. And that's why we kind of like progressed on to being scooter boys in that sense because we weren't into the fashion stuff. We liked riding our scooters. We dressed up in all the army gear and, you know, we were just like scooter boys, really, or scooterists. The chairman of the Lampreton Chocolate Preservation Society, Mr. Jeffrey Stock, a special. SX200. And we are the Ace of Spades. Oh, what is this? I don't know. Tell me, Dad. We're doing a documentary on the vintage scooters. Oh, are, you, are you from Deutschland? Yeah. Oh, hey, oh, right, oh. We're into vintage scooters. That'll learn them. Hello. Where is that to? <laughs> make, make Mud Parker's history. <laughs> My, my name's Alex, I'm from Leighton Buzzard. Oh, yeah, I'm down here, quite a big skinhead bird, didn't I? <laughs> you met one last night, see yourself, didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, she was stupid. Are you going to take a grand out of time? Hey, boys, why don't you be on TV? Come on, ask me a question. Only about five years. Five years old? Yeah, I don't like it. No, I'm a young gun. <laughs> Yes, we fought you tomorrow. We're all young, but I'm only we're all young. In oh, heart, we're, we're all young, you know. We're all mug boys. And I don't know. Shabo. To be welcome for a change is really nice, you know. Just thanks, man. I mean, you get, you get these drunks come up, but anyway, it's really good. <laughs> when you when you actually get to see the locals, they're like so welcoming, and we do sort of take over the town, but without an aggressive way. Really good. Yeah, we've still got about 20 members in and around Bridgewater, Minehead, up to Weston. Um, we're quite active around here. But there are many scooter clubs in this area. And we're also part of, also put on scooter rallies. Um, me and a friend of mine, Andy, we kind of like represent the Southwest as such. We, do three scooter rallies, one at uh, Exmouth, we put on that, um, Woolacombe, and we've just done one at Warmwell near Weymouth. And we're a collection of clubs all in the area, and we do, we do this for the scooter clubs, basically, because when, say, back to the NRC in, in, in the National Runs Committee, or the NSRA as it was up until about 80, 95, they controlled all the scooter rallies when that folded as such. Everyone kind of took over an area and we took over our area and we've got about 20 clubs in this association called the Southwest Scooter Clubs and we put all the money that we make into a, into a fund as such. So it's non-profit making, no money goes to anyone else as such. And then we use that money to put on another event next year. So we've got three rallies planned for next year. So we use that money to put on them. Some rallies make money, some rallies lose money. So we kind of like do that really. Mm -hmm. 